Welcome back everyone. Now that we have gone through the two optimization techniques, I thought in this video, I'll answer a question or two about optimization. These are sort of the questions I had when I was learning about optimization and figured some of you might also have similar questions. Now the first question is, when do I use the same element reference technique? And when do I use react.memo? You can use the same element reference technique when your parent component re-renders because of state change in the parent component, which results in the child component having to re-render. Do keep in mind that this technique does not work if the parent component re-renders because of changes in its props. So same element reference, yes, when state is causing parent to re-render, and no, if props is causing parent to re-render. On the other hand, you can use react.memo when your child component is being asked to re-render due to changes in the parent component's state which do not affect the child component props in any way. Now there is also an overlapping scenario. What if the child component does not have any props? React.memo should still work. In that case, it is still better to go with same element reference because that is something React automatically provides for you and it also prevents you from having to add react.memo all over your code base. Hopefully, these points shed some light on when to use the two optimization techniques. Let's now move on to our second and final question. And this is something we all think when learning React. If react.memo provides the optimization by comparing the props, why not wrap every single component with react.memo? Or you can also rephrase it to ask, why doesn't React just internally memoize every component and not expose react.memo to the developers? To answer this question, I'm going to quote Dan Abramov. Shallow comparisons aren't free. They are O of prop count time complexity. And they only buy something if it bails out. All comparisons where we end up re-rendering are wasted. Why would you expect always comparing to be faster? Considering many components always get different props. I can't put that in even simpler terms, but let's make use of some math to understand what he's saying. Let's say a normal component takes 10 milliseconds to render. Obviously, we want to optimize this if possible. So we wrap it with react.memo. Now Dan mentions that shallow comparison isn't free, which means it doesn't happen in zero milliseconds. Let's say the shallow comparison takes two milliseconds. Now let's take a look at a few re-rendering scenarios. Let's say in our first round of re-render, the props did not change. So we have the shallow comparison of two milliseconds and that's it. We don't have to render the component. In the next render, let's say the props changed. So this time, React first does the shallow comparison, costing us two milliseconds. And because the props aren't the same, React renders a component which takes 10 milliseconds. Now we have taken 12 milliseconds in total to render the component. Provided that many components, most of the time, always receive new props, your component rendering history could be something like this. 10 milliseconds for initial render, 2 milliseconds for optimized render, 12 milliseconds for re-render, 12 milliseconds for re-render, 12 milliseconds for re-render, and you get the point. So by wrapping everything in react.memo can actually be detrimental to the performance of your app. Therefore, it is always a good idea to memoize only expensive components where the props hardly change. Another point to keep in mind, 
is when you optimize the rendering of one component, React will also skip rendering that component's entire subtree because it's effectively stopping the default render children recursively behavior of React. Well, I hope that answers a few questions that you might have about optimization in React. Now, I just mentioned that it is not a good idea to wrap every component with react.memo. In the next few videos, I want to walk you through a few examples where you could actually be incorrectly using react.memo. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.